Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest of our Meet the Winemaker series. And today we are super, super excited because we're going to visit the Jura region. Lots to learn, one of the more obscure regions of France. And we are honoured and privileged to be joined by our friend Jacques Howler, winemaker at Domaine Mer. Good evening to you, Jacques. How are you? Hi, very cool to be with you this evening. I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Now, before, just before we start, a quick reminder, the, um, the presentation uh, will go on for about half an hour. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask them in the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen. And as usual, if we don't get around to anything, uh, we can always contact you by email after the presentation with answers to any questions that we don't have time for. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's go, go and talk to, to Jack. Um, Jack, we always like to start our presentations with talking about the winemaker themselves. So we can hear from your accent that you're more of a, an Alsatian. Uh, what brought you to Jura and what's your history as a, as a winemaker, Jack? Oh, I thought uh, I hide my accent, but no. <laughs> uh, no, yes, um, I'm coming from a, exactly a family uh, coming from Alsace, uh, involved in uh, barrel making and wine making for a lot of several generations, six generations. And uh, I made several wine making in several regions, uh, mainly in Alsace uh, for 13 years. And then I visit also, I had the pleasure to make, the, to make one year also in California in Sonoma when I was a young winemaker. And, uh, and I had also the chance to discover uh, Gascony in the southwest of France. Uh, on uh, my love for cool climate grapes uh, bring me back to Jura uh, because yes, Jura is a fantastic place for cool climate grapes. That's terrific, yeah. And so how long have you been the winemaker at uh, Domaine Mer? Uh, it will be in a couple of weeks, uh, I will start my third vintage. So uh, yes, in the third one. Great, terrific. So uh, moving on, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Men Mare. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the Mare family and a little bit about the winery? Yes, um, we, we found uh, in the history of Arbois that uh, um, a vine grower called uh, Mare was already uh, in Arbois in, uh, in the 17th century, um, 1632. Uh, but uh, then uh, the most uh, uh, part of the growth of the estate was, was in, the, in the 20th century by Henri Maire in the 50s. Uh, he bring the estate to, we can say, the actual size of the estate with uh, really uh, one of the most important uh, estate in Jura with over uh, 300 hectares and actually 230 hectares uh, uh, we will, uh, we will uh, harvest this year. Okay, so just to give people uh, who haven't seen this before, the conversion between hectares and acres, there's about two and a half yeah. acres per hectare. So we speak in, uh, in, in acres, so that's a little over so nearly 600 acres of vineyards. Can you give us, I know the Jura is very small, that is actually a, a big proportion of the total Jura vineyards, right? Yes, right. Uh, for example, Jura, the total vineyard is about uh, 2,000 hectares. Uh, and uh, in the village of Arbois, Arbois is only eight, eight, uh, 800 hectares of appellation. So we can say we, we are about uh, Yes, one fourth, one third of the Arbois on ten percent of the Jura appellation. Great, and the winery, uh, the vineyard, sorry, the domain is split up into several different independent uh, domains within the Henri Maire. Uh, Henri Maire, when he built the estate, he um, he stick together several estates uh, on, uh, but all the estates are very close together. Uh, one in the hills of Arbois called the Sorbier. And then we have uh, some several other estates, uh, one called Grange Griard or the one called Montfort. So, but uh, it's quite unique to have one estate with over 200 hectares on one single uh, yes, place. So uh, this is really 
special for Jura. Yeah, and you're very lucky to have so much vineyard to play with, huh? Yes, exactly. Uh, it's also why I had so a pleasure to to um, to come and join the, the project because uh, I made several winemaking around the world, but uh, here in Jura I found all the things I can play with, from sparkling to steel wine, from white uh, to red. So uh, it's amazing uh, spot to to uh, yeah to uh, to make a lot of different winemakings. Yeah, I, I, I refer to the Jura, if anybody watching uh, likes Tolkien, um, uh, I, I refer to Jura a little bit like, you know, uh, the Shire in the, in, the, in the Lord of the Rings. It's such a, called the beautiful country, with all these beautiful rolling hills in the valley there at the, at the foot of the mountains. So you would be our, our Bilbo Baggins, Jack, yes. or, or maybe yeah. our, our, our Gandalf the wizard working your magic in the Jura. So as you yeah, can <laughs> um, just very quickly before we move on, uh, I can see on the shelf behind you uh, the bust of somebody famous. Would you like to just pull him up front and, and tell us a little bit? Okay. It's quite heavy, but I will try. Uh. Come on, you've, you've, you've got big muscles, Jack. You can handle it. So I don't know if you if you see, see this. Yep. Okay. Very so uh, this is a very famous uh, um, uh, someone who is very sam famous in, in Arbois because uh, it's uh, uh, Louis Pasteur. So Louis Pasteur is a, a French scientist who was born in 1822. Who he made a lot, a lot of studies uh, who bring a lot to to, uh, to the science. Uh, and uh, we can say as an analogist, he's also the first uh, analogist because he worked a lot about um, uh, the yeast, how uh, wine, uh, juice uh, become wine uh, with these small little uh, microbiological, uh, um, yes, the, the yeast. And um, he also, of course, uh, made a lot of different also studies about, uh, yes, virus on, uh, so it's very famous in France. And we so proud to, to grow the, the, the vineyard called Claude des Rosières, where he made his first experience about fermentation in the, in the 19th century. So Henri Maire actually owns the vines that Louis Pasteur did his experiments on uh, as the foundation of modern day wine science. Exactly. And so we every year are very proud to have us this uh, this vineyard, uh, thinking about all this history uh, of Louis Pasteur. All right. So that's 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 a great story. Um, let's move on and get into the nitty gritty then uh, for people looking in, because um, Jure is a little bit obscure and probably nothing more obscure when you start than the varietal. So perhaps probably the the best place to start with Jura wines to talk about grape varieties. Can you run us through that, please, Jack? Yes. Uh, in Jura, we grow uh, something easy to understand is the Burgundy grapes called uh, like Chardonnay for the whites and the Pinot Noir for the reds. But we also have some very specific varieties who we can say we only grow in Jura or maybe some single uh, hectares of in some other countries, but mainly, mainly in Jura. And these grapes are for the whites, uh, one who is called Savagna. Um, uh, Savagna is a cousin uh, of uh, Traminer, so a very aromatic grape uh, where um, we use in different ways. So we will maybe explain a little bit later uh, in, 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 in the program. And then, of course, we have also two specific red grapes. Uh, one is called Trousseau. Uh, Trousseau is an interesting and amazing grape uh, because uh, we don't really know uh, from where this grape is coming from. Uh, some people say it's coming from Portugal. Uh, and some other people say we bring it to Portugal <laughs> because in Portugal, <laughs> Because in Portugal, you have a grape called Bastardo. Now, Bastardo is one of the grapes you made uh, to uh, use to make Porto. 
uh, port to make port, and, uh, but we also find uh, it in uh, Jura. On the second uh, specific red uh, grape, you only find in Jura, it's called Pulsar, also called uh, Plusar in uh, a small little village called uh, uh, Pupia, but uh, here we call it Pulsar. So it's a very amazing grape because it's uh, the color is very special, uh, ruby color between uh, rosé and red, uh, a light color on a very um, specific wine which is not grown um, in, other, in other regions in France. Just a quick um, uh, question coming in. It's always good to make the, dif uh, the difference, Jack. Somebody's saying, did you say Sauvignon? So obviously some people sometimes think Sauvignon. You just make the distinction there? Yes, uh, Sauvignon, which is the grape uh, we grow here in Jura, has uh, really nothing to do with the classic Sauvignon you can find, uh, of course, in the United States, in Australia, New Zealand, or in the Loire Valley. No, uh, here is Savagnin. Savagnin, uh, if you see, uh, it's not exactly the same spelling. Uh, and Savagnin is uh, really a cousin of Traminer, who is a grape coming from, we can say, from, uh, from the north of Europe, from, yes, the, maybe from the Alps uh, or from the northeast of France. You can find some of them, of this grape also. For example, uh, by the neighbor who is in Switzerland, uh, it's called Le Paya. Uh, some other people call it Nature. So it's the local name here is Savagna also. Now, you said in your introduction that uh, you liked working with cool climate grapes. So here we're in, we're in cooler climate. So generally the wines from Jura, we're not talking big, heavy, juicy wines here, right? Yeah, yes, um, the, the cool climate here, for example, in winter, we have quite uh, cold winters. Uh, of course, in the last years, it was maybe uh, with the, the, the global heating, not so heavy, but in general, uh, the cool climate uh, is really hard, hard winter here. And then spring, quite cold. So we need grapes who are able to uh, to, uh, to uh, have the opening of the buds quite late to, uh, to avoid the frost. So uh, on these grapes uh, are interesting because they, uh, when they, when at the harvest time, these grapes keep nice acidity. So it's why also Jura is a so interesting region for sparkling. And this nice acidity also uh, allows the, the, the grapes to, to keep also the freshness in the aroma. And uh, it's a, that's very important to have aromatic whites. Uh, you must have uh, maybe in August, uh, in August you must have not so, so, um, uh, so hot nights. So important to have cool, fresh nights so um, then you can keep uh, nice aromas uh, on the whites. Great. Now let's move on uh, uh, to the next stage which will be to, to take us through the Appalachian system and how we're organized. So we're gonna pull up some maps because as I said, it's a, it's a little known area. Not many people know very much about it. So we would be very grateful if you could educate us a little bit on what the jury is all about and how the Appalachian system works here. Uh, first of all, you can see that Jura is nested between uh, Burgundy uh, and uh, Switzerland, we can say. So if we cross uh, the mountains, we, we're quite uh, close to Geneva in Switzerland. So it's really between Burgundy and Switzerland. So as a geological era, eh, all this system um, of uh, land was built at the same time as uh, Burgundy. So that is in the, in the Jurassic period. It's, uh, so we have quite, uh, it's called the mirror of, 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 uh, of Burgundy. So we have the, quite the same uh, soils as in Burgundy. That means um, uh, limestone, clay, uh, different systems, uh, different uh, type of, of, of clay, uh, gray clay, red clay, so a lot of different uh, soils. So that's very uh, interesting uh, 
to uh, to make uh, different uh, selections of of uh, of lands of hills uh, of plots on uh, so the appellation of uh, jura it's uh, only 2000 hectares about uh, the main uh, the first appellation who uh, who is called Côte du Jura this appellation uh, is the appellation uh, of the wine you can you can uh, craft in all around all around Jura from north from Arbois to the south to uh, yes uh, the last villages uh, Beaufort uh, Cousins uh, uh, so Saint Amour the last one uh, um, so this 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 appellation uh, allowed you to to grow uh, to use uh, Chardonnay, Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, and all all the typical uh, uh, Jura grapes, but mainly the whites because in the south of the Côte de Jura it's mainly planted with with Chardonnay and Sauvignon. So that's then, more uh, of a, a, that's more of a regional generic appellation that can apply to most of the wines of Jura. Exactly. For 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 people who knows uh, uh, appellations like uh, Burgundy. It's like a Burgundy appellation. So that means it's a general regional appellation. And then you have uh, appellations more, you can compare to the Burgundy village. village. So uh, in, this, in, this, in this case, you can have, for example, the appellation where we have the facility here, of the winemaking facility on all the estate is Arbois. So Arbois is uh, well known for for decades for centuries even in the, in the 13th century Arbois wine was already well known so for also on a political point of view uh, it's also called the capital of uh, Jura wines so Arbois is uh, the, the, also the place where you have a little bit more reds because uh, the climate is really really uh, a good climate for the reds. So it's why also at Domaine Mer, we have about 45 to 50% also, not only of whites, but also of red, Pinot Noir, Trousseau, Poussa. And then you have another village called L'Etoile. We will have the pleasure to, to, uh, to taste it uh, in a couple of minutes. So L'Etoile is a small little, little appellation where we grow only whites. So uh, Chardonnay and Sauvignon. It's a small appellation, 67 hectares. So uh, really a small percentage of the whole Jura, but uh, very nice uh, spot for whites, really. And we're proud to have uh, about uh, six, seven hectares in L'Etoile. So also about 10% uh, of the appellation of L'Etoile. Henri Mer was also, uh, was always wanted to have uh, the best appellation of all the Jura in his portfolio. So it's why for decades, we also have uh, uh, seven hectares in L'Etoile. And then of course, the last but not least is Chateau Chalon. So this is really the, the iconic uh, village uh, uh, planted mainly with Savagnin on mainly used in the Savagnin winemaking style called Vin Jaune. So this is the kind of Grand Cru of Vin Jaune. We're also proud to have about, to have about 10% of this appellation because it's Chateau Chalon is about uh, also uh, 50 hectares when we have uh, about five hectares of Chateau Chalon. Great, we'll, we'll talk uh, in more detail about uh, Vin Jaune uh, a little bit later. And probably not enough time today, Jack, to talk about the other three products that are made in Jura, which are not regional specific, but we're talking about Cremant, because I know uh, Demain Mer makes a lot of Cremant, and then Macvin, um, uh, and, um, oh, I'm missing one, Omar, uh, uh, Mar de Jura. Uh, but really not a lot of time to talk about that today, other than to say you do make a lot of extremely good Cremant de Jura, sparkling wine too, Jack. Yes, sure. So, uh, as I said, uh, the first, the first uh, good quality on main uh, uh, idea of Jura is the, it's a good cool, cool climate grape. So, uh, it's about the same, the same climate as uh, Champagne in some ways. So, uh, for having perfect base wine to make uh, sparkling wine is also Jura a perfect place. So, I have a lot of fun also to, to craft uh, Fantastic sparklings here. Wonderful. All right. So I think uh, 
Uh, it's time to, to start a little bit of tasting. We can talk more generally about uh, the, the wines at that point. So uh, I think we're going to start with L'Etoile. Yes. Very good. So, uh, L'Etoile. Why L'Etoile? What does L'Etoile mean and why? So Little is a, a nice little name. Uh, it's uh, just a translation of star. So star, a village, which the name, uh, who is named star. It's it's fantastic, no? So uh, why why this village uh, or this appellation is called Little? Uh, different uh, possibilities. One is because uh, the village. Uh, uh, is uh, nested in the middle of five hillsides. On these hills, uh, it's like the five uh, branches of a star. So okay. it's certainly one of the reasons. On the second reason is also because in this, uh, in Jura in general, we have a lot of fossils uh, who are in the middle of the of the of the vineyards uh, in the in the. In the, in the soil. On the, the specific fossil uh, we find uh, in Litual is uh, really like some little stars. Maybe, I think, uh, yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Uh, Neil, uh, this is a fantastic picture uh, of, of this little, little star we find in the, in the, in the, in the Litual soils. And, and I believe they're actually fossilized body parts of prehistoric sea, uh, sea, sea creatures, right? Yes, exactly. So uh, it's amazing also when you make some, some uh, when you work in the vineyard, uh, sometimes you just uh, find uh, this uh, on, your, on, your, on your feet. So it's, uh, it's always a, a fun to, to work in the vineyard to find fossils. So tell us about the wine. So, um, so in Litual, we have uh, in general um, uh, two, uh, two grape sorts, uh, two grape varieties, uh, mainly Chardonnay, but also Savagnin. At Domaine Mer, it's about over 85% of Chardonnay. And sometimes, yes, we add also a little part of Savagnin. Um, uh, so the, the, the soil of, of, um, of uh, L'Etoile is mainly made of uh, limestone. Uh, uh, it's not so heavy soils, clay soils, uh, like we can find here in Arbois. So these, uh, and also the, the, the altitude is quite higher maybe than here in Arbois. So uh, the Chardonnay, uh, very crispy, with a nice acidity. Uh, on the on the the Savagna bring the, this little touch of of uh, warmness of from the Savagna. So when we blend it together, it's very interesting. Uh, bring a lot of complexity to the wine. So specifically for this wine. Uh, we choose to, um, in 2018, uh, we have uh, more and more vintage, quite hot vintages. So 18 was a fantastic vintage with uh, good, good quality of the grape and also uh, very uh, ripened grapes. Uh, so we decided to make, for example, for this wine, no malolactic fermentation. So uh -huh. really really to, to keep the freshness uh, on, the, on the sharpness of the Chardonnay. Is it tank fermented? So yes, mainly uh, tank fermented. Uh, I have a little, maybe a little 10% uh, I fermented in oak and then I blend it together it just to bring a little bit smoothness, but uh, mainly to, to, to respect the fruit of the wine, uh, it's mainly uh, fermented in stainless steel, yes. And what would you say the main difference uh, between, uh, uh, obviously, Chardonnay from Burgundy, what would you say the main difference between an Etoile and a Chardonnay from Burgundy? And are there any similarities? Are there any Burgundy appellations that are quite similar to that style for you? 
Yes, in general, uh, l'étoile also, uh, the Jura style in Chardonnay, uh, especially when it's like, like this with uh, quite a sharpness, uh, nice dryness, you can compare it. Uh, I always say it's a little bit uh, a mix between, uh, between Macon, uh, Blanc and uh, on Chablis. So uh, uh, maybe the fruitness uh, on the very flowery and the uh, fruity uh, nose of, uh, of the Macon and also the, the sharpness on the minerality. Uh, so this is coming always when you have tasting of uh, Chardonnay from Jura, it's coming always this term of uh, minerality. And how's it tasting today? So today, okay. Uh, I really enjoy the nose who is um, uh, uh, really on uh, citrus, citronella, uh, apple a little bit also. Still very fresh. Uh, this one was bottled uh, spring 19, uh, but uh, really, really still uh, primary aromas, very fresh in the nose. On oh, yes, exactly. Um, the minerality really uh, in the back mouth you have it. So it's 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 really interesting. Uh, this wine for uh, for some um, uh, seafood fish. Uh, so very nice alternative for people who like chard chardonnay. Uh, of course, chardonnay it's grown worldwide, but uh, the Jura style of chardonnay is really really authentic with this kind of really mineral style so so straight uh on the, so i think uh, the wine will keep uh, also uh, be able to be aged also a couple of years till uh, after bottling because uh, the sharpness bringing structure so uh, yes i'm happy to to uh, to see that the wine is still moving in the in the good direction good good job yeah and and anything that has that the the, the fruity fruity freshness of, of Macon, the minerality and acidity of Chablis, what isn't there to like? That sounds that sounds great. Um, moving on, uh, let's have a look at a couple of the reds. Um, and I think uh, next up is a Côte du Jour à Tradition. Yes. So uh, Côte du Jour à Tradition here. Uh, also interesting is, is this uh, uh, label, who is a label who is a kind of copy of a label who was made by Mayer in the 50s. So uh, it's very uh, nice to, to bring back this, this, uh, this design. So Tradition is also a, a name we use a lot here in Jura, uh, also in white for another style. But in, in, the, in the reds, uh, tradition means a blend between the, the, the Jura red grapes. So in general, it's a blend with a, a good percentage of Pinot Noir, but also the local grapes like Trousseau and Pulsar. So it's very original because each, each, uh, each third or each, each percentage of these uh, local grapes bring uh, really uh, uh, the Jura style. Uh, so something you cannot find in another region because blending these three grapes is uh, only here you can make it. <laughs> <laughs> any any oak aging on this one, Jack? So um, about aging? Yeah, any oak aging is in barrels? Uh, no, no, we we only try on this wine the tradition. It's only the the idea is only to bring the the fruitness of each uh, variety. So, um, yes, Pinot Noir with his small little uh, red fruits, Trousseau. Uh, Trousseau, uh, we will come back uh, after uh, with a 100% Trousseau, but Trousseau is a grape who bring, uh, uh, when it's really in a good vintage, Trousseau is interesting because it brings uh, this kind of spicy, taste. Uh, if you like uh, Syrahs, uh, uh, the Syrah, 
uh, has always this kind of uh, black pepper. Uh, and Trousseau uh, also have, uh, is, a, is a grape with this kind of uh, finish uh, on the peppery side. Uh, on the pulsa is more on this uh, uh, freshness, uh, maybe a higher acidity. Uh, the color is a little bit uh, uh, more on the ruby side. So the three together uh, are really fitting together to bring this fruity Pinot Noir with this spice of Trousseau. Uh, so um, here the local people uh, like, it's really the, the, the local wine really of Jura. So the local people here like to, to, to drink traditional red. And so I'm assuming these wines generally drunk young and not a great aging potential? Um, yes, uh, especially um, at Domaine Mer, we want to put the tradition with a really fruity style. So to keep this fruitness, it's better to enjoy it uh, in the three, four uh, first years. Uh, it's not, it's not the topic about, it's not, uh, it's, it's aging quite well. For example, Pulsa is a grape uh, who is a very light color grape, but uh, uh, I had the, the, the pleasure to taste uh, Pulsa over 20 years. The color was, was ruby orange a little bit, but so amazing, interesting. So, um, so yes, for the fruitness, it's better maybe to, to, to enjoy it in the third, uh, four first years, yes. So uh, about uh, exactly uh, to try to, to describe the wine today. So uh, the color is a typical, yes, color of this kind of blend with a kind of ruby color. So uh, it's, uh, it's very uh, light color. The nose is really on the fruitness of the Pinot Noir. We can have this little back nose with this kind of spice which is coming slowly. So in the mouth you have this, this uh, uh, current uh, uh, cherry coming from the Pinot Noir, this black pepper from the Trousseau. On the Pulsar bring a kind of little smoothness on the tannins. So it's also an easy drinking wine here. We like to, to share with friends, uh, with uh, these typical French uh, appetizers, charcuterie, you know. So it's really good, good wine for good time in the summertime. Just what the doctor ordered. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so more about Trousseau. Take us to uh, the Ozan plot. Jacques can tell us uh, about Trousseau Ozan. Yes, so Trousseau Ozan. So um, um, with the with the project of uh, of uh, going further or going maybe uh, deeper in the in the understanding of of uh, of the Jura terroir, we decided two three years ago to to try to to find out a single plot where for each, each uh, variety, we can find the best place of the estate. And uh, one of these plots uh, we found out is a plot for Trousseau. On the little, the little uh, place where this Trousseau is grown is called uh, La Vigne Ozan. So Vigne Ozan. And so Les maybe, Ozan, uh, that means? You can translate it for me, maybe. <laughs> Well, it, it, I think it means where the donkeys come from. So exactly. like, back in the day, at some point before it was vineyards, there was somebody raising donkeys, I would imagine, uh, in medieval times in that plot before it was planted with vineyards. So it's the donkeys. So it's the donkey plot. <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe also um, um, you must also know that this plot is selected by... by uh, because it's, uh, it's um, a Trousseau is a grape, as I said before, uh, having maybe origins of uh, Mediterranean origins, like uh, maybe Portugal. So it's a, it's, a, it's a grape who needs uh, 
hot hot place to 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 be at the the, the good ripeness. So uh, Trousseau Zone is interesting for that, and also we have the choice of um, uh, very old vines uh, on this on this uh, on this spot. Uh, and the, the 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 grapes are just fantastic. It's also always a pleasure to visit this this uh, this single plot because when you see the the the, the vine stalks, it's like uh, they they so big and so uh, uh, with different forms. You're speaking about Tolkien, so so you have so different uh, forms. You like in a in a in a fairy tale somewhere. Yes, exactly. You got it. It's a nice picture of this uh, trousseau grape. So uh, the idea of this trousseau was to make really a um, selection uh, with um, uh, long fermentation, long maceration over three weeks. And um, with, of course, the traditional way to, uh, to extract the color, we also use in Bourgogne, it's called pigeage, you know. Uh, and um, also, it gives a very rich trousseau, uh, full of color. Uh, you may, I don't know if you see the color. If it yeah, it looks very deep. Those. Yeah, quite deep. Uh, and um, and also this one uh, because of this concentration, we choose to to make a little bit uh, oak uh, aging. But the idea is not to bring too much oak. So uh, in 2018, I chose to only put one third in the oak and uh, two thirds was in tin and steel uh, to keep the fruitness. And then before bottling, we just um, um, make the blend between the, the oak uh, aged on the, on the stainless steel. So it was, a, I think, a good choice to keep the fruitness on the nose. And um, in, the, in the mouth, you have this kind of a uh, nice uh, balance with this little oaky, oaky style, but uh, maybe in a light way. In 2018, it was certainly one of my uh, best, uh, my favorite wine uh, after after um, uh, all the bottlings of the 2018 uh, vintage, because to make a so concentrated trousseau. Uh, uh, in the past, it was not easy because it was a, a late, it's a late uh, uh, grape normally, but with the global heating, Trousseau is more and more interesting. So I think uh, 2019 uh, was fantastic and 2020, which is coming soon, will be also nice because we have a very early vintage. I remember tasting this wine with you uh, last year, Jacques, uh, you know, when it was just finished and remembering what a, what a lush, juicy, a beautiful, easy drinking wine it is. So congratulations on that. It really is a lovely wine. For people looking in asking about how much these wines may cost. So the first three wines that we tasted there, which is L'Etoile, the Côte de Jura, uh, Tradition, and the Trousseau Zan, are all priced uh, somewhere around the $25 mark, depending on obviously um, certain state differences, but that's the sort of benchmark around $25. So really great value too for this caliber of wine. We, we often compare Jura to Burgundy in many respects. And of course, as you all know, Burgundy is uh, a little bit on the expensive side or can be. Uh, and I don't think you find many villages in Burgundy that provide that kind of value um, for that, that kind of quality in the $25 price point. So that's one of the great attractions of the Jura. Now, we're getting a little short on time, uh, Jacques, and I did want to make sure we spent enough time talking about probably the most iconic of all Jura mm -hmm. wines, it is, which is the Van Jaune. So let's dive in. And for those who don't know anything about it, would you like just to give us a, a very quick overview of what Van Jaune is, how it's made, and what people who've never tasted it should be expecting? So let's start a little bit with about the, the winemaking concept. Okay, so um, Sarnia uh, is the, the grape we use to make vin jaune. So we, we harvest it uh, in a quite late uh, situation to be very sure that it will, be have a, it will have a nice potential in, in sugar, so in alcohol. So it's about 14 degrees in January, it's the last uh, grape we harvest. Then it's just 
uh, we just make a wine making to make a Savagna. You can say it's like a base wine at this uh, stage. So 14 degrees, uh, quite a heavy acidity. And then uh, we put it in uh, barrels. On uh, quite unusual in the wine making world, we don't top uh, the barrel. So we keep air about eight liters per uh, barrel. And then uh, we have the chance here in Jura to have a specific yeast who is uh, colonizing, we can say, the, the skin or the surface of the, of the, of the barrel. Uh, after a couple of weeks, start to be like a little skin. And this skin is called, I think, in English, floor. Uh, in, in French, we say voile. Yeah, we call, uh, it, we call it a veil. It's the same, yeah, the voile in French, a veil, yeah, thin, thin veil of, of yeast. And um, this makes possible to, uh, to protect the wine to, from, uh, for example, acetic bacteria, uh, um, um, too much oxidation by the air. But at the, at the other, other side, okay, nice picture. <laughs> so you can. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Neil is showing you the, the surface with this kind of yeast you can have on the on the top of the of the barrel, and then this uh, this um, this skin protect the wine from yes uh, acetic bacteria because the natural way the wine wants also to go to vinegar and don't, we don't want to so we we lucky to have this this yeast to protect the wine. And then we keep it six years and three months. So this is a very uh, uh, long aging. And during this aging, we lose a lot of wine uh, who is just ev evaporate from the, from the barrel. Uh, this, we call this the angel share, you know. The and, angels uh, get a very big share in Jura, don't they, Jack? Yes, it's why the angels here are so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Good place to be an angel. <laughs> and so, uh, after these six years, uh, we, uh, we, we take the, the clear wine and we bottle it. And it is a very special style of wine because the aromas are aromas you, you when you first taste this kind of wine you, you can choked because it's really really uh, unusual uh, uh, um, uh, aromas these aromas are in the direction of nuts hazelnuts uh, curry and also uh, a lot of um, uh, experts uh, the says that uh, saying that uh, this kind of wine have the most uh, long-lasting palate after after tasting so for sometimes for minutes or half an hour or more so and uh, also after bottling is uh, wine you can keep it for uh, decades or well, centuries so it's a wine who is really uh, iconic as you said uh, so it's the, the, the image of Jura uh, so uh, so uh, at Domen Mer, we're very proud to, uh, to grow uh, um, 40 hectares of Savagna. Uh, and uh, so we required a, uh, a winemaking facility where we grow and we, we, we have a lot of barrels in this process, over 1,000. So, so uh, it's one of also of the Jura speciality. We're very proud. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, uh, we can taste on, on, on show. I can show you the one of the last vintage you all, all also have uh, on the sale in US. Sure. So it is a, um, it's an oxidative style of wine. Uh, some people compare it to Sherry Jerez from, from Spain. Uh, can you comment on that for us? Yes, it's also interesting about the story because uh, also some of the some of the assumptions about uh, how this kind of technique or this kind of winemaking came to Jura. Some of the some of the people who study history thought that maybe it's some some. Uh, 
uh, sisters from uh, Spanish convents who came to Jura to bring this typical technique. Uh, so if, in Reves, uh, they also make this kind of, uh, of uh, winemaking, but the difference is that they fortify mainly uh, in the main styles, they fortify the wine with alcohol to bring the base wine to a higher degree. Uh, but here in uh, Jura, it's only the natural degree uh, of the of the of the wine. So we don't add any alcohol in the in the in the base wine. So it's why we wait quite late in the season to harvest it, uh, to have this 14, 15 uh, potential uh, degree. Wonderful. Well, let's let's have a taste, or let you have a taste at least, and and tell us what your impressions are, Jack. So uh, to taste it well also uh, can give you an advice. Try to open it uh, maybe a couple of hours before, maybe the day before, uh, really to, to open the wine because it's a wine who, who needs to breathe uh, and it's always better if you, if you, if you give him some, uh, some, uh, some opportunity to be open a couple of hours uh, before. Can we decant it then? Uh, yes, also, you can decant it, especially the old uh, Vengeance, uh, actually, uh, uh, especially the old vintages, but for the vintage just bottled, uh, okay, just to decant, yes, bring some brief, some, some air, uh, but uh, also another thing is that when you open a Vengeance, you must not be afraid to keep it open, because uh, it's like port or like cashiery, it's so stable after these uh, six years of aging that uh, really it's not moving so much after opening. So, uh, of course, that's, that's, could... that's good for anybody watching who can't actually finish a bottle of wine. That's very good news. Yes, it's, it's, it's very, very, very good news. So, uh, of course, the color is uh, quite like gold, uh, close to a uh, yellow. Uh, because of this uh, long uh, aging. Um, also, what is important to say is that it's not an oxidative wine. It's not a chemical oxidation. It's biological oxidation. That means it's oxidation uh, through this, this typical uh, uh, skin of, of yeast. So it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference in the nose. So it's not like... Uh, a wine with maderization, uh, with a heavy oxidation. No, this, it smells like hazelnuts, nuts, also curry. And also what's interesting in, in, is in the middle of the palate is kind of smoothness also. And this is coming from the kind of autolysis of the yeast who are falling down on the on the on the barrel who bring also like a smoothness a richness to the wine so this uh, jack, is we, jack we have uh, two people asking the same question we have uh, michelle and steve both looking in and they said you can open the bottle and keep it open for a while how many how many days how many weeks can you keep a bottle of van joan in your cupboard if you had a little sip every day yeah i think uh, even uh, uh, a week, two weeks is really not a problem. Great. Not like Granny Sherry that stays there for five years and gets crusty. Just like a couple of weeks. No, a couple of weeks anyway, because, uh, but uh, the wine was so uh, able to catch oxidation during the aging that after that, even if it's open, the oxidation have no effect on the wine because the wine has so uh, digest so much oxygen during the aging that he is uh, strong enough to resist to any uh, further oxidation. So I have to, I have to admit, being a, a Burgundy buff jacket and, and living next door, it's very much an acquired taste. It took me many years to like Van Joan, and now I'm a kind of a, a, an unconditional fan, because once you, once you get to know it and understand it and love it and drink it with the Conte cheese that the, you know, that is made locally, it's just a fantastic aromatic, experience uh, and it can just be a little bit off-putting for those people who never tasted that style of wine when you first taste it but it's definitely something you need to stick at and it's an acquired taste yes neil i agree on maybe at the beginning you must be a little bit open-minded uh, because of course it's a really unusual 
the, 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 the way of the, of the, the, the tasting uh, of this vin jaune. But uh, after, uh, when you start to, to enjoy, you will continue and try to, to compare vin jaune from Arbois, from Chateau Chalon. And uh, the, 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 the fans are really big fans in general after having this education about vin jaune. Before we finish, a quick word about the Clavelin bottle, if uh, Lisa can put that back up for us again. Can you explain to us a little bit about the special Jura bottle for Vin Jaune? Yes, this Jura bottle is called Clavelin uh, because uh, it's a very common uh, name, family name, and uh, one of the first growers who, um, who uh, uh, made uh, this form of bottle was called Clavelin, but specifically what is important to know is, uh, is that is uh, the contained is uh, very specific on the um, uh, unusual also in France, it's 62 centiliters. Why? Because uh, after six years and three months of aging, you lose uh, from starting from uh, 100 centiliters, you only have 62 centiliters up after six years and three months. So the idea is to also always remember what the angel uh, stole us. Uh, <laughs> as, as, so uh, yes, we, we lose uh, these, uh, these 30, uh, 38 centiliters uh, just in the air. Uh, so it's why we have this specific uh, Clavela 62 centimeters bottle. Um, yeah, so just to, to clarify for people looking in, if you go into wine stores in America, you may find the Clavelin 62 centiliter bottle in stores here, and it's actually illegal. So um, we did a lot of research actually when Boisset bought Henri Mer in 2011 to, about exporting Van Jaune to the United States. And we came to the conclusion that actually most people who are bringing, or actually technically everybody who's bringing 62 centiliters uh, bottles into the United States is actually breaking American law. So being good law-abiding people that we are, we do not do that. Uh, but also because I think uh, it's a wine that is not for glugging, is not for mass consumption, it's very really being appreciated. We thought that half bottles was uh, a more suitable size. So we do have a mini Clavelin shaped bottle that we are yeah. selling in the United States. Here, Jack's got one in his hand. And so we're retailing uh, our Van Joan in 375s for somewhere around $34, which is actually terrific, terrific value. And I think a size that is, as I said, probably more suited to the style of consuming Van Joan than, the, than a big 62 centiliter uh, bottle, even if you can keep a 62 centiliter bottle over, open for, for a couple of, uh, of weeks. So a um, couple of questions before we go, uh, Jacques. Uh, let me just check this one that's come in. Uh, there we are. Okay, that's more comments than questions. Okay, so um, I did have a question about the two uh, other products we mentioned earlier. A quick word about Van de Pay. Are you making a Van de Pay, Jacques? Yes, Van de Pay is also uh, uh, specific on... Uh, uh, one of the richness of Jura. Uh, so uh, Van de Pai, uh, if you translate it, is a straw wine. So it's a typical way to dry the grapes uh, onto we, we, the, the, the grapes are harvested and then uh, we dry these grapes. Uh, on, after a couple of months we, we make the pressing, but it's of course after this couple of months uh, the, the, the concentration of the of the of the of the of the grape is over 20 potential degrees, so a lot of sugar. Uh, so it, it become a sweet wine after winemaking, about 14 degrees of alcohol and about 150 to 200 grams of sugar. Uh, so uh, very interesting, uh, also a sweet wine. Also interesting because also. In this uh, Vin de Paille, in general, we have all these typical Jura grapes, like Pulsar, Trousseau, and uh, Chardonnay, of course, also. But the, the, the Pulsar bring also this typical Jura uh, particularity. And a very tiny amount of juice from those raisins. It takes, it takes a, like, I'm calling them raisins, right? Because they're dry, dried grapes. Um, how many, you know, how many, how many tons of grapes you need to make, you know, a, a litre of wine? I don't know what the calculations, but it's tiny, right? Uh, 
Uh, ordinary uh, calculation is about, you need about in a classic wine, you need about 140 uh, um, kilos of, of grapes to, to, to become, to have 100 liters of wine. For, uh, for uh, Van de Pai, uh, with 100 kilos, maybe you will have uh, 20 liters only of, uh, of uh, wine or juice. So it's like a four or five times less than uh, with uh, ordinary wine. It's also, right. yeah, this is also why it's so uh, uh, a small amount of the Jura uh, portfolio. All right, and one last question again from, uh, from our friend uh, Steve, uh, who wanted to know a little bit about Mar de Jura. Okay, this is also one of the Jura uh, AOC, AOP appellation. So Mar is, uh, is a distillation of, uh, of the, the grapes after pressing. So all, all the grapes after pressing are fermented uh, in some tanks and then after a couple of uh, weeks, a month, in general, it's in the middle of the winter, we distill all these grapes. Uh, and uh, we become, when we have, we, yes, we will have uh, an alcohol uh, about 50 degrees. And then we age it uh, 18 months minimum or maybe more uh, to, to obtain a fantastic uh, a spirit. Uh, it's a kind of uh, grappa style if you compare with the Italian uh, grappa, yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the French regions make Mars, and I've had them, and they're they're beefy, very strong, powerful, very very yeah, a, like a lot like Grappa. Yes, indeed. But, uh, mm -hmm. Nice to finish your evening. Okay. Yes, to finish the evening on to it's used in French. We say digestif, so to digest all these nice uh, 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 cheese we have here. We need this to to digest after the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack, we've come to the end of our time. Uh, that was really, really interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, not an easy subject to cover and uh, a lot of stuff that people don't know about. So I think a, a really terrific introdu introduction to the Jura region that's gonna make many of our viewers obviously want to taste the wines, which is the most important, but also to know a little bit more about the the culture and the history of the one of the most interesting winemaking reasons in France, I think. So thank you so much for your participation. Thank you, Neil, and I uh, hope uh, you will continue in the US to enjoy the Jura wines. I will do my best, Jack. Thank you everybody for watching. We look forward to seeing you again. We have uh, these webinars going on all week, so I'll see you tomorrow, uh, Wednesday and Thursday for more adventures. In the meantime, be well, stay safe and see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.